when you're in hostile territory like this, you got to learn to keep your eyes moving all the time. Don't just look for Indians, look for signs of them. You already told me that, Coop. I know I told you, and I'll keep telling you again until you pay more attention to your job than that new horse. Yeah, he sure wants to stretch his legs, doesn't he? Come on. Hold it! Come here. Get down. Oh, I can handle him all right, Coop. I said get down. Now, we're nearing the top, aren't we? What did I tell you about skylining yourself? I thought you were going to make me trade horses with you. If you want to live long enough to be a scout, never go over the crest of a hill without knowing what's on the other side first. And easy like. I see what you mean. Arapahoes? Yeah. We gotta help whoever's in that wagon. Get out. Look, he's still alive. He's waving them goodbye. Yeah, maybe for a good reason. Like maybe supplying them with rifles and whiskey. Let's find out. Biggest horse I've ever seen. We'll see. How did you do? Just, just a minute here now. That, that, that'll be all for now. That's all. That's it. We'll see. I, I didn't know there was anyone else around except me. My name is Hershey, Jameson Hershey. Cooper Smith. Yeah. Pleased to meet you. Uh, this here's Barney West. Howdy, sir. Well, I, I ain't seen folks except in Indians for about a week now. I guess. Where are you from? We're scouts from a wagon train a couple hours back. Well, if that don't beat all. You hear that, Herman? They're from a wagon train. <laughs> yeah. You know something? Yeah, I'd like to know something. You waiting around here for more Arapahoes to show up? Arapahoes? Arapahoes. Indians, like the ones that just rode off. Oh, so that's what you call them, huh? What's that in those barrels? Well, now, them two on the other side, and this one has got water in it. Except this one's empty, kind of. And that one has got a little cracked corn left. Yeah, but it's much better for them this way. Chewing the cobs, it keeps them from getting lampers in their mouth and gums. What about those other barrels? Oats. Oats? Yeah, yeah. I was afraid I'd run out on them, you know, but I got loaded up pretty good at Fort Kearney. Bought them from the Army. Do you have any objections if I took a look? No, of course not, of course not. You fellas like uh, some feed for your little ponies? Uh, no, thanks. That's, uh, that's oats.
get salt. I know what it is. Yeah, I, I brought it in lumps instead of blocks, you know. That's much easier to handle that way. Well, that's the first time I've ever seen a chuck wagon for a horse. Mr. Hershey, I owe you an apology. Yeah, what for, Mr. Smith? Well, when I saw those Indians riding away, leaving you unharmed, I kind of figured maybe you were supplying them with whiskeys and rifles. Me, sir? <laughs> oh, that's a good one. <laughs> no, no, I ain't got neither. <laughs> but I tell you, when I first saw them Indians closing in on Herman and me, I could have used some of that bottle of courage. <laughs> hey, never mind closing up the tailgate there. Yeah, but we don't worry about the engines no more. No. Yeah, they're just curious about Herman. It's easy to understand why. I bet he's the biggest horse anybody's ever seen. You know, it's a funny thing, though. I try to tell him his name is Herman, but they keep calling him Wakanda. Wakanda? Well, that's another name the Indians use for, well, something they consider a supernatural force, a kind of a god. You don't see. You suppose that's why all of them want to get some of the hairs off of Herman's leg? Well, sure, they figure if they can wear something that came from a Wakanda, they'll be as strong as he is. Oh, so that's why Herman and me always got the best of the bargain when we traded with him. You've been trading with the Arapahoes? You know, just a few of Herman's leg hairs for a few years of corn. How lucky can you get? <laughs> oh, well, I wouldn't try to cheat them, you understand. No, that's the way they wanted it. And how else could I get corn for Herman way out here? That's not quite what Bonnie meant, Mr. Hershey. Don't you know you're in hostile Indian country? Well, to tell you the truth, Mr. Smith, the Herman and me ain't quite sure where we are, but we're headed for California. And we sure would like to hook up with that wagon train of yours, wouldn't we, Herman? Well, that'd be up to Chris Hale, our wagon master. I don't see why not. You hear that, Herman? We're going to California with the wagon train after all. <laughs> Ain't he something, Mr. Chris? Certainly is, Charlie. Where did you ever find a horse that big, Mr. Hershey? Well, I had him since he was about three weeks old. He was the only critter that got out of a terrible stable fire. And when I found out that the owner was trapped in there, too, I just uh, brought the cold home with me. Must have bottle fed him, huh? Oh, I had to. <laughs> Then he got so used to being pampered that he uh, sort of followed me around like a pet dog. Yeah, he still does. <laughs> it was the day he tried to climb into my lap that I called him Herman uh, after a dog I once had. <laughs> it's hard to believe he was ever a little fellow, though. <laughs> well, it sure is hard for me to believe that he could ever grow to be so big. <laughs> well, you know, it was nearly a year before I found out that he's what's called a Belgian. <laughs> Well, uh, Coop tells me you're from Chicago, Mr. Hershey. Yes, I was born and raised there. Did you come this far west all by yourself? No, no. Herman and me has only been uh, alone since we left Scott's Bluff. Oh. Uh, well, uh, to be honest with you, Mr. Hale, Herman and me has been on three different wagon trains already. Three? Yes, yes. The first one uh, left us behind at Fort Kearney, and. The second one dropped us off at uh, North Platte, and then the third one at Scott's Bluff. <laughs> Are we out in Nebraska yet? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, why did they leave you behind? Well, Mr. Hale, I ain't as young as I used to be, and I don't go so fast as I used to. Them other wagon masters said that if I didn't keep up, why, well, I'd be left behind, so I got left. <laughs> I know I ain't got no right to ask for favors, but if I slow you up too much, just say the word and uh, I'll understand. Well, are you, uh, you mean you got so tired driving that you couldn't keep up with the rest of the wagon? Well, M Mr. Hale, any time he'd like a little relief, I'd, I'd be glad to drive for him. What about your own wagon? Well, I can handle it, Mr. Hale. See, if you put Mr. Hershey's wagon right behind ours, we'd, we'd be handy any time he wanted some help. Huh. Sounds fine to me. Well, see, that is the most friendly offer that Herman and me has ever got. And we ain't even met yet. <laughs> oh, William Temple, sir. And uh, this is my wife, Martha. I'm very pleased to meet you. Yeah, and that goes the same for Herman and me. <laughs> ain't that so, Herman, huh? 
<laughs> we don't want to go riding alone anymore, do we? Uh, Hermes is dead right. No, we don't. <laughs> what do you say is <laughs> Why don't you show Mr. Hershey where your wagon is, will you? Oh, yes, sir. It's right down here. Oh, thank you. Will you excuse me all, huh? <laughs> come on, come on. Real likable man. Likable or not, he shouldn't be trying to go across the country if he's not physically able. Oh, he'll keep up. Shucks, I bet he's as strong as his horse. <laughs> well, I hope you're right, Charlie. That old man's a fool trying to get across country with a wagon like that and only one horse. If you ask me, he won't be able to make it to the Continental Divide, much less get across it. <laughs> You don't look old enough to know how to boil water, but you sure cooked up a good supper. Thank you, Mr. Hershey. <laughs> you two young uns seem like newlyweds to me. Oh, no. We've been married two months and three days. Two months and you, you don't say. <laughs> well, I moved to California with my folks two summers ago, and, well, I got so lonesome for Martha that I had to go back after. The only way I could get her to go back to Monterey with me is to marry her. Oh, William. <laughs> well, I would say it was worth the trip. <laughs> yeah. Is that where you're going to live, Monterey, uh, in California? Yeah, my, my father opened a carpenter shop there, and I worked for him. Oh, so you're a carpenter, huh? Yes, sir. And he's learned to be a cabinet maker, too. You should see some of the things he's made. William is very talented. Yeah, how about that, Mr. Hershey? <laughs> I just hope there are some people in Monterey who feel the same way about my work that she does. Yeah. Well, I guess I better get back to Herman. Oh, you don't have to leave yet, do you, Mr. Hershey? Well, I don't want to, but I, there's one thing I'd like to ask William before I do go. William, is it true what I heard about California, that, uh, that it's summer there all the time? Most parts of it, I guess. It's sure that way around Monterey. But there's lots of snow in some places. It just depends on where you're planning to settle. Yeah, well, Monterey, there's no doubt about that. Monterey is the best place for Herman and me. Oh, that's wonderful. Well, we'd sure be happy to help you get settled if there's anything we could do. Well, thank you, William. That's very kind of you. Tell me, what kind of uh, work did you do back in Chicago, sir? Well, Herman and me used to work for a brewery. We delivered beer to saloons. Oh. <laughs> yeah, Herman is sure given a lot of pleasure to a lot of people. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've never visited Chicago, but I've heard a lot about it. Is it windy, as they say? Windy? Why, one day, the wind coming off Lake Michigan was so strong that I seen a hen lay the same egg twice. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I guess after that that I'd better get along home. So be all rested up for tomorrow. <laughs> and I want to thank you for a good supper. Oh, you're more than welcome, Mr. Percy. Yeah. We enjoyed your company. Yeah, thank you. And as my old pa used to say, if you're lucky enough to get up in the morning, <laughs> Be happy about it. <laughs> Good night, sir. Do you think you can help Mr. Hershey find a job in Monterey? I mean, some kind that won't be too hard for him. Oh, I think so. But uh, what makes you so sure he wants a job? Maybe he's got some money set away. Oh, I don't think so. In fact, I'm sure he hasn't. Well, what makes you say that? I don't know. Just a feeling I have. At all. Just a little case of feminine intuition. William. <laughs> oh, you've been sitting up for me, huh? <laughs> well, say, we sure met up with some fine folks this time. Yes, we did, and they like us, too. You should have heard what that young fella said about California. He said the sun shines there almost every day of the year. And in, in Monterey, where we're going, they don't have no snow nor ice ever, just like I promised. Ain't that wonderful? All right, you ready for the lullaby? Down in the valley, valley so low, hang your head over here. Love. 
of sunshine, violets love dew. Angels in heaven know I love you. Know that I love you, that I love you. Angels in heaven know I love you. size of Herman, especially on a hill like this. from the top now. Come on, come on. Come on, I'm kidding. Oh, Herman. Wait a minute now, now you don't have to feel ashamed just because you're a little tired. All right, all right, come on, I'll walk with you now. I'll, I'll walk with you. Yes, the boy. Now try once more, will you, for me? You know this ain't half as steep as the hill we had to cross when we picked up those kegs of beer at the Blue Moon Saloon. Come on, try it, huh? Come on, come on, give it a try. Come on, that's it. Come on, dear, that's my boy. Come on, I'll get it for you later. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Now, don't you worry, none. We'll catch up with them. It's all downhill now. Don't go away without me, huh? Ready when you are. You want to get up now, Herman? Yeah, just fine, Mr. Hawks. Well, uh, how come you're lagging so far behind? Uh, we ain't so far behind. Uh, the others are just ahead there, see? You look there, they're ahead. We've been uh, following right along behind them all the way like uh, we were supposed to do. Well, you uh, started with them. You're supposed to stay with them, not drop behind until you're riding the rear guard. Yeah, yeah. Well, the fact is, I... 
I stopped the way back and got out just to stretch my legs, you know. <laughs> like I told you last night, I, uh, you know, I get pretty tired sometimes. We understand. As soon as we get up to the Newton place, we can all take a little rest. say a good groomin's worth a bag of oats. Well, how no, Mr. Worcester. Uh, you mind if I give Herman a little dessert? No, not at all. Get, well, look at that there, Herman. You ain't had carrots since you left Chicago. <laughs> hey, go right ahead now. One bite at a time there. <laughs> well, it sure is a pleasure to meet a man who cares so much about his horse. You know, half the people we carry to California don't have any idea how to treat the animals that's going to get them there. Suppose you're going out there to do a little homesteading and maybe look for gold, huh? No, no, no. I'm too old to start prospecting and uh, all be a pioneer. <laughs> Shucks, I didn't think you were any older than me. Sit down. You got Sit down. kin folks out there, Mr. Hershey? No. Nobody but Herman and me, that's all. Well, the wagon train's the only family I got. Sometimes I wish I had somebody like Herman. <laughs> well, I'm going to tell you something. The only reason I'm making this trip is for Herman's sake. Herman's sake? Yes. He just can't stand them cold Chicago winters no more. So I'm taking him out to California for his health. Has he been sick? No, but Herman is 38 years old. 38 years old? <laughs> I've never met a horse 38 years old before. And last winter he fell down on the ice. Twice he done it. Did you ever see a big horse fall down on the ice? Pitiful sight it is. Every time they tried to get up, he'd slip and fall back again? Well, the last time it happened, I was afraid he'd break his leg. So I promised him right then and there that I'd take him someplace where there wasn't any snow or ice. So if Mr. Hale thinks we're moving too slow and he wants to throw us off the train... He didn't say nothing like that. Well, no, not yet, but he might. Don't you worry, Mr. Hershey. Now that you've told me how it is, I will see that you and Herman have no problem in keeping up. Well, I sure appreciate that, Mr. Worcester, but I don't want you to go to no trouble on my account. Oh, don't you worry, it won't be in trouble. I can handle Mr. Hale. Just leave it to me. <laughs> Ready to roll! Uh-oh, uh-oh. Herman, we'll get to California. Don't you fret. Well, I better run. See you later. <laughs> All right, Herman. Ready to roll. Come on. Come on. Anything wrong, Mr. Biggers? That's what I'd like to know. Why are we moving so slow? I don't know. This rate I'll get into the gold country by Christmas. I'll ride ahead and see what I can find out for you. Yeah. Why don't you just climb in the back and get yourself a good snooze? <laughs> driving and putting you to sleep in the first place. What's the matter with you? You know better than to poke along like this. Safety first, I always say. I don't believe in driving any faster than safe. Besides, we ain't trying to win no race, are we? Well, I'd like to log a few more miles before we camp for the evening. There ain't no use pushing the team and tying them out. They ain't going to no fire, either. Mr. Biggers is complaining about the train moving so slow. Well, I'm complaining about the same thing, Barney. That Biggers lives up to his name, don't he? Bigger mouth I've never seen. Always complaining about something. Give me those lines. Get up! I don't have any respect for his animals, don't have any respect for anybody else he got into you, Charlie. Hello, man Hurst, falling behind again. As slow as I've been going. Oh, so that's it, huh? Didn't young Temple help with the driving like he promised? Well, he offered to, but the old man wouldn't let him. Wouldn't have done any good anyway. Why not? Are you taking a good look at that horse of his? He has to be 35 years old if he's a day. He's 38. Oh. So that was the reason the other wagon masters let him go. Well, because of the horse, not the man. Right on up ahead and tell Coop we're going to camp earlier than we planned. All right. Mr. Hale? Oh, hello, Bigger. When we signed on back at St. Joe, you agreed to take everybody to Sacramento by the shortest possible route and in the fastest possible time. That's right. Well, then how long are you going to let this newcomer, Hershey, and his old horse slow this wagon train down to a crawl? 
Well, I was planning on having a talk with him as soon as I had my supper. Well, I'm afraid talking won't put muscle back into that worn-out hay burner. Now, the sooner you get rid of him, the sooner we'll make better time. I mean, just weasel-hearted polecat. Get rid of me, says. Poor old man. Poop. How far out of our way you figured this touring? About 25 miles, maybe. Why? You're planning on dropping Hershey and Herman off at point, ain't you? I'm not planning on anything. I can't let that horse hold us back four or five miles every day. Losing that much time and get this whole train snowbound in the mountains. I'm going to have a talk with him. And I'm coming with you. I'll be right back. That's all. Roses love sunshine. Violets love dew. Angels in heaven know I love you. Know that I love you. That I love you. Angels in heaven know I love you. Good evening, Mr. Hale and Mr. Worcester. I want to interrupt you here. Oh, you ain't interrupting nothing. And Herman, he could sleep through anything. <laughs> I brought a carrot for Herman's dessert, but it'll keep till morning. Yeah. Oh, well, Dad, thank you very much. Uh, Herman loves carrots any time. <laughs> Won't you sit down, gentlemen? Thank you. Thank you. <clears throat> well, uh, Mr. Hershey, I hope that you realize what I'm going to say isn't meant to. Now, don't feel so bad about it, Mr. Hale. It ain't your fault if Herman and me are so slow. And we won't have no hard feelings if you have to leave us behind. Well, I never leave anybody behind, not in a country like this. But as you know, Mr. Hershey, I'm responsible for a lot of people on this train. That's right. And Mr. Hershey here is one of them. Don't forget that. Mr. Hershey, have you ever thought of just turning Herman loose? He could live off this country. Turning Herman loose? You asking me to leave him behind? Oh, Mr. Chris, don't leave nobody behind. We just heard him say that, didn't we? I'm trying to find the solution to a problem. This is fine grass country. He'd never go hungry, and you could go on to California with us. You couldn't even suggest a thing like that if you know how the two of them felt about each other. I know how they feel. Now, Mr. Hershey, you must realize that Herman is physically incapable of ever getting to California. He's old, he's tired, he's, uh, well, he, he just never make it, that's all. I don't believe that, Mr. Hale. If I did, I wouldn't have started him on this trip in the first place. It may take us a little longer than some folks, but we'll get to California, Herman and me, one way or another. Now, make up your mind about that. You got to do what you got to do, and I got to do what I got to do. But that ain't no reason why we can't part friends. <laughs> well, what I've got to do is to convince you, Mr. Hershey, that a man your age has absolutely no possibility of getting across this country by himself, even if Herman pulled your wagon every inch of the way. <clears throat> now, here's what I'm prepared to do. We have a few extra horses. Now, I'll lend you a team to pull your wagon. And then maybe if Herman just follows along behind... By golly, that'll do it, Mr. Chris, that'll do it. Well, I certainly appreciate that, Mr. Hale, but there's only one thing. I ain't drove a team in uh, I don't know how long, and I don't know whether I'll be able to handle them or not. Well, maybe William Temple can, until you feel up to it. Well, uh, William did offer to drive Herman for me. Well, uh, Charlie will bring you a team by in the morning. Well, thank you very much, Mr. Hale. <laughs> All thank <right>. you. Thank <laughs> you. I knew there was no problem. Mr. Chris and me couldn't solve once we put our heads together. Oh, <laughs> see you in the morning. Bye. All right, get ready to move. Load them up. I blow them up. Wagon drove. Wagon drove. You better get aboard, Martha. Will you? I'll go tie on Herman. Let's move out. Oh, Herman. 
Sherman. Now, come on, get up. Uh, we got to get going. What's the matter with it, Mr. Hershey? It ain't gonna work, William. What ain't gonna work? Well, he's been pulling that wagon all his life, and seeing them other horses hitched to it is breaking his heart. Breaking his heart? Well, his feelings been hurt. I should have known better. You better get that other team on hitch and take them back to Mr. Hale. What, what, what's the matter, Herman, huh? Now, you ain't sick, are you? No, no, you ain't sick, of course you ain't. Let me see that. No, no, you're fine. Yeah, now, don't worry, I got that other team unhitched there. Now, you're going to get right back in the wagon. That's right. Yeah, yes, son. <laughs> He deserves to be left behind. It's his feelings hurt. Why are you driving so fast? Well, you told me to. Oh, William, Mr. Hershey's falling behind again. Who, sir? Who? Why are we stopping? Well, do you think it'd be a good idea if I went back there and rode with him for us today, or maybe drove for him? I'm sure he'd like that. Well. An old man and an old horse and an old wagon are all kind of a little bit the same. They need lots of encouragement to keep going. Keep up with the train, you hear? I love you. Ooh. Anything wrong, William? No, sir, I just... Thought maybe to enjoy a little company and hear a little more about California. Well, I sure would like to. Yeah, climb on. Hey, you know, I, I'd especially like to hear about Monterey. Uh, shall we get up now, Herman? <laughs> what? You know something I want to do as soon as we get to Monterey? I want to pick me an orange right off the tree. Well, I never did that. Can I think about it? I don't know if there are any orange trees in Monterey. No oranges? Well, there's some pears. And I know of a plum orchard. Oranges, well, well, it's uh, mostly fishing around there, you know, especially for whales. Whales? You don't say. Hmm? You have a rifle, Mr. Hershey? What for? Don't worry about them, William. Them engines never bother us. They don't... What do you think you're doing? Uh, we was letting Herman get a rest. Well, you might have a permanent rest if you don't get back to wagon train. Now, let's get him hitched up and get out of here. Why, them engines never hurt Herman and me. You know, you and your horse might be Wakanda to those Rapahoes, but Mr. Temple isn't. <laughs> Mr. Hershey! Mr. Hershey! <laughs> Mr. Hershey! <laughs> Mr. Hershey, how do you make Herman move? Wait a minute, wait a minute. All right, Herman, come on, we go now. How do you make Herman move? <laughs> we gotta get going, Herman, come on. How much longer is this gonna go on? They're holding everybody up because of an old fool and his dying horse. Now listen, beggars. You said we would be in Sacramento by the 13th of September. Now, if I'm not there by then, I lose a chance to buy into a gold mine. I never gave you or anybody else an exact arrival time in Sacramento. If you think I'm going to be cheated out of a fortune by a horse that ought to be shot and put out of his misery, you've got another thing coming. 
Why, that no good polecat. Did you hear what he said, Miss Chris? Uh, sometimes it's the most humane thing to do. To shoot Herman? Charlie's an old, old horse. All right, so he's old. So am I. I suppose when I get too old to cook for you and the rest of them, you'll take me out and shoot me. <laughs> no, that's not what I mean. Human thing to do, that's what you said. I'll tell you another thing, Mr. Chris. You're going to have to shoot me before you shoot Herman. I'm not going to shoot Herman. You said you was. I did not. But I can't let him go on making us lose this much time every day. What are you staring at? Nothing. Any coffee, Charlie? Get it yourself. <laughs> you dropping Hershey? You think I like doing it? What's that supposed to mean? Well, nothing. You're the wagon master, aren't you? I mean, you give the orders. You're getting as bad as Worcester. We were worried about you. You had a right to be, Charlie. Fair size bunch of Arapahoes last week. Oh, Herman. Here we go. Mr. Wooster and I are just about ready to ride out after you two. Yeah, yeah William was sure a big help to me today. Yeah, I gave him a lecture on Monterey. He yeah. did. Right, he did. Hey, hey, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. I tell you, I don't know which is the tiredest, Herman's feet or my seat. <laughs> <laughs> well, you've done pretty good today, Herman, and I'm proud of you. Would you put it up there for me? Thank you. As soon as you finish up, why don't you go get washed up? <laughs> Mr. Wooster's invited all of us for supper tonight. No, oh, that's very nice of you, Mr. Wooster. Well, you folks had a long day. The least I can do is save you from cooking. <laughs> well, thank you, Mr. Wooster, for my part. And I guess you're anxious for your supper, too, ain't you, Herman? Guys, I forgot his carrots. I'll run and get them. No, no, never mind. We've got four or five left, yeah. And I'll give him one for dessert after I feed him his oats. Hmm? You mind if I put the nose back on? No, sure, if you want to. You know where they are? Yeah. Back in the last Mr. Barrel. Hershey, I'm sorry, but I simply can't allow any more of these delays. Now, we talked about this before. Yes, I remember. So the first thing in the morning, Coop's going to start guiding you to Torrington. Torrington? Where is that? That's a little fur trading settlement just the other side of the Wyoming border. But if you do that, Mr. Hershey and Herman will never get to California. Well, if I don't do it, Mrs. Temple, this whole wagon train may not get to California. Mr. Hale. Please let me finish. What, Mike? Uh, I, I, I can't explain it to you, but I, I could draw you a picture if I had a piece of paper and a pencil. Come on. Well, what do you think, boy? Oh, I think it's worth a try, Chris. Just might work. How long will it take you, will you? I think I can do it in a day, sir. All right, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Hale. Pass the word this train is staying right here until day after tomorrow. Mr. Hershey and Herman are going to have a nice rest before we pull out again. You mean you're not sending to Torrington? It may not be necessary now, Charlie. That's the best news I ever heard. Uh, I think it's pretty good news myself. I think it calls for a real celebration. How about a big hoedown after supper? It's a good idea. I've always said you're the best wagon master in business. Well, thank you, Charlie. I hope our next cook thinks as highly of me. Next cook? Whatever gave you the idea I was quitting?
<laughs> well, I ain't played so much and so hard since the last time I met those fellas in the Blue Moon Saloon. <laughs> <laughs> well, you were just wonderful on the guitar, Mr. Hershey. Yeah, well, I think it was Mr. Worcester's cider that made me perform so good. <laughs> <laughs> Tied to the wagon here. He, he's gone. Well, maybe, maybe he just got loose. No, no, Herman wouldn't go no place without me. He, he ain't never done that. I gotta go look for him. Now you can't, Mr. Hershey. Not tonight. No, no, I've just got to go. Go tell Mr. Hale what's happening. <laughs> now, Mr. Hershey, I, I can't let you go out there all by yourself. You think the engines got him? I don't know. Yeah, but the engines always liked Herman and me. Yeah, well, Mr. Hershey, now. Please, when Mr. Hale gets no. here, he'll, he'll know what to do. <laughs> I... Poor Herman, he... He just can't go to sleep without my singing to him. I feel terrible. Arapahoes has told Herman he's perfectly safe. Is that right, Mr. Creel? That's right, Charlie. You see, the Indians won't hurt anything they think is Wakanda. <laughs> They'll possibly treat him better than you do. <laughs> what I mean is that, uh, you know, they won't work him and they'll take good care of him. <laughs> now, Biggers isn't in his wagon. Somebody said they saw him at the hoedown, but nobody's seen him since. It'll be light pretty soon. You can start tracking him. Look, Chris. Mr. Hershey, we're, we're going to do all we can to find Herman for you. Just as soon as it's light enough, Coop and Barney are going to track him down. Thank you, Mr. Hale. Take me to where them engines are. Maybe I could talk them into giving Herman back to me. 
I'm sorry, Mr. Hershey. We can't let you do that. Well, there's no reason for waiting over now. Coop, Barney, pass the word to hitch up and get ready to roll. Mr. Hershey, I'm going to give Bigger's team to you. You can have his wagon, too. I think it's only proper after what he did to you. You'll be a lot more comfortable in the Bigger's wagon. <laughs> uh, there ain't no use in going to California now. Put up a barricade! <laughs> Like we lost our insurance when we lost Herman. Mr. Hershey, William, bring Mr. Hershey up here. Hershey? This Herman. Herman? Herman! Well, looks like we can unhitch and relax. William, let me know if you need any help to build that contraption. Herman, am I glad to see you. <laughs> oh, yes, well, I've been so worried about you, I didn't know what to do. <laughs> uh, yeah, are you all right, Herman, huh? <laughs> you all right? Oh, look, look what they did. Well, they gave you some corn, huh? <laughs> yeah, and I was wondering what happened to you. It don't look like them engines took any of your leg feathers, either. I'll tell you what I'm going to do. We're going to, we're going to, I'm going to bed you down, and I'm going to sing you a lullaby. And then I'm going to let you snooze all day, yeah. No, no, I'm going to do that, yeah. You're going to snooze all day, and you must have been up all night. I know I've been. <laughs> all right, let's go, huh? Come on, come on, Herman. <laughs> Take it easy now, down the hill, come on. Nothing to be scared of. Maybe a carrot would help, Mr. Hershey. Yeah, it's a good idea. Hand me one. Come on now, Herman. Now you trust me, don't you? Here you are, Herman. Now come on now. Come on. You like this once you find out what it is. Instead of walking, you'll be riding all the way to California. That's <laughs> it. Come on now. <laughs> Come on now, there's... <laughs> you want to get up now, Mr. Hale? Yes, sir, Mr. Hershey. We'll pass the word to get up. There's your Herman. I tell you, you deserve this. There we are. <laughs> All the way to California. <laughs> yes, sir. <laughs> 